Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this guy right here. This is the Seiko Watches SNJ025, also known affectionately as the Ani. So, um, first off, I, I want to thank my buddies over at Lewis Jewelers in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, they are my watch dealer for Seiko as well as Omega, Breitling, Tag, anybody else. Um, and they, they've been really good to me, and they can be good to you too. They helped me out with this guy, um, as in offered me a nice price on it, and they'll offer you a nice price too. Talk to my buddy DK, tell him Nick Shabazz sent you. He'll hook you up with some promotional price. Um, because I know they've got these guys and a bunch more of them available. So, anyways, there's that. I just want to thank very much my buddy Josh over at the Journey Win Junk blog. He is a good friend of mine, a great reviewer. And he said, Nick, hey, if you pick up an Arnie, I'll, uh, uh after you're done, I'll, I'll buy it off you. Like, okay, yep, that's, that's great. That's win-win for me. And so that is a beautiful thing. Um, and next thing, let's go ahead and do some size measurement. This is actually a large watch, but it doesn't wear as big as you'd think. Nominally, if we look at the, uh, the, the case diameter, and it's a little tricky to do because the case sort of slopes, but we can measure anywhere between 45 and 47 millimeters here. You can see here that the case sort of, uh, let's see here. Yeah, the case sort of widens up at the bottom. Plus, you've got all these pushes on there. Um, this is a very wide watch on the wrist. With the crown in there, we're looking at, you know, 51 millimeters easily. However, the lug-to-lug -lug distance, which in many ways I think is more important for people with smaller wrists, is coming in right around 50 millimeters, which makes this guy actually wear a, a much more reasonably than some of the bigger 45 millimeter watches from other folks. It's a wide watch for sure, but it's not all that tall. And I think that tends to um, have really nice effects, generally speaking. The other relevant dimensions here are, of course, the um, the lug width here for us uh, changing straps, which I believe to be 22 millimeters. And then the actual thickness of the watch is a little tricky to do just because are you basing this on the bezel or are you basing this on the uh, crystal but generally speaking we are in the 14 to 15 millimeter range so it's absolutely a thick watch, but it's not gigantic. It's not completely out of line, and that's a that, that that's great. Um, and then finally, a quick note on the uh, the, the the history of this watch. Uh, the sharp-eyed among you might notice that this watch here is actually the same watch that was worn by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, okay, not the same watch certainly, but a, a very similar in design to the watch that was worn by Arnold Schwarzenegger in the uh, movie Predator. Um, that's why this is referred to as the Arnie. Um, and so it is for some people a very iconic watch, and that's uh, why it's gotten its name. So, um, that's, that's the Seiko Ani. Let's go on ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this very interesting little watch right here. So, on the good side, to start with, like I said, this guy is a big watch, certainly, but it's not out of line. I have relatively small wrists, 6.75 inches or so wrists. I'll, uh, raise this up here and throw this guy on the wrist. Um, this is actually not completely, oh, come on now. This is not completely insane for me. You would think that it would go a little crazy, but no, really, yeah, it's definitely a big watch. Yeah, at some level, I, it's a little bit like I stole daddy's watch and wore at the school. But at another level, actually, the, the camera is doing some things here with the, uh, the, the the distance. It looks a lot more reasonable from further away. So this is a watch that, although it is definitely big, you should have no question about that, um, it is not so far out of line as you might expect. Um, and I think that people, even with smaller wrists, are going to be able to enjoy and rock this watch without a whole lot of trouble. Next thing... This guy is a fully, uh, it's a fully water-resistant watch. Um, and one of the things that makes that so is the fact that this is, uh, these are pushes here. So right here, we've got a conventional crown. Um, it works in the way that you would expect. It's a screw-down crown. So when you pop it out, you can pull the crown out and then set that guy, uh, and then that'll stop the second hand, let you set the watch. The other sides here, these are pushes. These are actually chronographed, well, not chronographed, they're multifunction. But what you need to do in order to disengage them is to twist this. And when you've done that, you can see a little black line emerges and that allows you to actually operate them. So see, as I press this, it just changed our mode. We went from a local time mode to a uh, day date. Oh, here's local time. Sorry. Uh, now we've got a chronograph, now we've got the alarm, now we're back to a local time digitally sort of mode. Um, and we can do the same thing on the top, which turns on the, uh, the, 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 the illumination. So what we've got here is a set of screw-down pushes that can be made completely waterproof and also resistant to being poked. Because if I do this with the, 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 I'm putting all the force I want to, and they, they're not getting poked. Um, and that makes it very easy to set the, uh, set this and forget it, and not worry about that mode getting changed. So I like that approach, both from a 
waterproofing perspective as well as it's got some functional benefits. That's good. Next thing, there are three different colorways of this particular watch. Um, one of them is this guy right here, the SNJ025. Um, and it is uh, its current price, 525 bucks, And it is uh, black and white, as you can tell. There is an SNJ028. It's uh, a gilt dial where it's got a little bit of uh, gold on there. Um, and that's 550 And then at also at 525 there is a Pepsi bezel version, uh, which is also pretty attractive. But this is certainly the classic Arnie aesthetic. So uh, there you go. It's nice that they're giving those options. Next thing, this is actually a dive watch. Um, you wouldn't necessarily think it. You know, there aren't that many digital analog dive watches, but this is 100% divey. I mean, it's got all the relevant issues for uh, for it. You know, for instance, the second hand here is loom, so you can tell if your watch is running. Um, you have the rotating bezel here. This is a uh, rotating dive bezel. And in fact, you even have the bezel guard. Uh, off to the side here, which means that you can't actually mistakenly hit the bezel. You have to do it like this. And you know what? That works great. It is a unidirectional bezel. You know what? It, it, it's good. You have the 200-meter uh, water resist. You can see right here, dive is 200-meter. And with those uh, little pusher guards makes things even easier. And you even have a low power indicator. When this guy is very low on power, it'll start doing a jump of two seconds, which means you're not going to go down on a dive and run out of battery life partway through. Um, even less so because you run a solar watch. So, you know, yeah, that shouldn't be an issue. But still, this is actually a serious dive watch. Um, this is a watch that I wouldn't, you know, I don't dive, but I wouldn't hesitate to dive with it because it's doing all the things right for it to be a diver. And that's a great thing. Next thing, the movement on this is good to go. It is a solar movement. It has as the analog, the, the, the digital, all of those kinds of things. Um, it's quartz, which means it's going to be very accurate. Um, and I've seen, in fact, no deviation from accuracy in the few days that I've had it. But that's kind of to be expected with quartz. Um, it is just a very, very nice, accurate little watch here. Um, and a uh, good movement. Speaking of that movement, this is a solar movement. As it says right here on the, or on the dial, it is a solar watch. That means that underneath this little area here, this, this oh, actually, let me see if I can make it visible to you. As I put some light onto this, you might be able to see through there and see the solarity. No, actually, it doesn't look like you can. On some of these watches, you can actually see the solar surface, uh, see the panel, but in this one, you can't. Um, but what that does mean is that this charges just using ambient light. This can be indoor light, although it charges more slowly, or you put it in direct sunlight, and it'll charge right up. Um, and this gives you a six-month power reserve, which is absolutely amazing. Um, and you also have the ability, by the way, to check battery charge. I'm just holding this down. You can see right now it says BAT10. That means that the battery is at its at full capacity. That'll go down to nine, eight, seven, etc. Um, as you're running low on that, so that means that if you are getting ready for a dive and you want to figure out whether you want to throw your thing on the, you know, strap it to the railing of the ship for an afternoon, um, that that'll tell you what you need to do. Um, it also has a power save mode. I can't show that off right now because it triggers automatically when the watch is in the dock. By the way, I'm sorry for the seagulls. They are picking this very moment to, you know go on Seagull Tinder and yell at each other. Anyways, I digress. But this has a beautiful power-saving mode, which means that you will get even more battery life out of it if it is kept in the dock, with everything stopping and then the little power save showing up the top there. And then finally, as you can see here, already, but I'll, I'll make it a little stronger here, the loom on this watch is pretty incredible. I'm going to go ahead and charge it off screen with a pretty powerful flashlight. What you can see here is that this is serious business loom. Seiko does many things well. Their loom is right up there at the top. You have not only a loomed pip, and also, by the way, uh, you can, if you unscrew this crown here, you can get the illuminating face there. Um, so any of your functions can be done uh, even with that. But you get full loom here, and it is all night long loom. It is beautifully bright loom. It is great loom. I, I am a loom snob, and this satisfies 100%. Um, and so this is absolutely great in the loom department, which is also helpful in the diving front. And so to me, all of that is the good. It is a great loom to watch. It has a solar movement, which means you don't really need to do battery changes. Eventually, you might lose a capacitor, but that's just a service and you can do that in 10 years, and okay, sure, whatever. I, I don't even know that ten this may last way longer. Um, it has a, a good movement overall. It's got a serious dive cred. I mean, this would be a watch you could dive with very easily. It has uh, three colorways, a screw-down pushes and crown, and it's big, but it's not that big. On the great side to me, actually, is the fact that this watch is very featureful. What I mean by that is that, yeah, it's a three-hand uh, watch. And, yeah, you can display, for instance, the day and the date. So it's Saturday the 7th right now. But you can also move to a local time mode, which means I've actually set another, uh, I, I've set another time 
here that I, I, I could actually move. So let's say I wanted to keep track of, you know, I've got a buddy in freaking Athens. Um, and maybe I wanted to put, you know, that on this time zone. I could reset that time independently of these hands and always look down and know what time it is in Athens. That's kind of a cool little trick, isn't it? Um, you also have the option to do a uh, an alarm uh, where you can set an alarm and it'll beep at you at that given time. You also have a chronograph on this, and that's actually pretty useful. See, if I hit this button while it's in chrono mode, can see it's starting to chronify. Um, in fact, you're even getting hundredths of a second there, and that's a beautiful thing. Um, but more importantly, I can hit it again, and it stops. That makes it a chronograph. And if I just hold it down, it goes to reset. Um, it's always handy to have a little chrono on you, and although very often a phone will do the trick in this modern era, um, it's a beautiful thing. You also have the ability to realign the hand in case they get knocked out of alignment. You know, it. look, it's a great little movement. And so having that kind of versatility is something I came to appreciate. I had the Breitling Aerospace for a long time, and I still have my Casio Oceanis um, that has that kind of multifunctional, and it's always fun where it happens, you know, where it comes up that it's necessary. So um, to me, at least, that's what's great, is that this is a very featureful movement here. Um, on the bad side, to start with, this has zero jewelry factor at all. There is literally nothing about this watch whatsoever that screams jewelry. This is flat out a tool watch, 100%. Um, and that's not necessarily a beautiful thing. Next thing, um, the watch itself is actually a little bit bigger than the original. And honestly, this watch needs no bigness. This watch doesn't need to be bigger. In fact, I would argue this should be a little bit smaller. Um, right now, the trend is towards big watches, but I'm really looking forward to that trend dying off. Next thing, this guy, much like myself, has small hands. Um, this is going to bother some people if I pull the crown out here. What the, you can see that the reason for that is actually quite straightforward. If I pull this out here, I can adjust the hands. Oh, it's actually going to make me set it digitally, and that's fine. Um, but as I reset the hands here digitally, there we go, change the mode. What we can see here is, I'll set this to 12. And then I'll push the crown back in. Um, and part of the reason, uh, and I guess I should reset the other one. But you can see that these hands don't actually interfere with that display. Um, and that's, that's a good thing. I appreciate that very much. Um, and, you know, hey, can't argue with it. I suppose, but it also does make this a little less legible. So, you know, that there's always the trade-off. Do you want to obscure the display or do you want to have hands that are a little bit smaller than you might otherwise want for legibility? I think it's okay, but whatever. It could be bad for some. Next thing, this guy does have a, a keeper on the bracelet. The, the, the bracelet itself is fine. It's just a basic Seiko rubber bracelet. There's not that much to it, um, but it has this metal keeper on there rather than a plastic one, and that's fine, but the edges of it are a little bit sharp, um, and it can catch on some things. It's not the end of the world, but it's something that, for instance, if you wear your watch to bed, could snag on something like your sheets or your wife or something like that. Not something I'm amazed with. Um, It's got style, certainly, but I, I might end up thinking favor and substance over the style there. Next thing, um, the alignment here on the uh, chapter, I'm sorry, the alignment of the second hand isn't necessarily perfect every time. It's always close enough. And, you know, some of this is within parallax era, but for some of these, it feels like it's not quite pointing at the second. But it's a little hard to tell, too, because the second hand is relatively far away from the uh, little indexes there. Uh, indices, I suppose, is the proper term. So keep that in mind. Next thing, and this is starting to get pretty unfortunate. This is a, not a sapphire crystal, that is. This is not a sapphire. This is a Seiko Hardlex crystal. Now, the mineral crystals are fine, and they have the advantage that they tend to uh, chip rather than or scratch and chip rather than shatter outright. Sapphire crystals are a wonderful thing, but they can occasionally shatter if you take a really hard hit. Now, mind you, this guy is not going to take that many hard hits because, well, it's protected. It's got this big old bezel around it. It's going to be very hard to hit this crystal. But for whatever reason, they have chosen not to use a sapphire crystal here. Sapphire crystals do not scratch as readily. They are uh, just frankly a little bit nicer generally. I always, always, always recommend Sapphire. And when you get up to this price point at 525 bucks, it feels very lazy that Seiko is still using a mineral crystal. They really need to just be doing Sapphire throughout the line above like 300 bucks. They, this watch is not nearly cheap enough to feel like cutting a quarter there is okay. And so I really would like to see a Sapphire at this price point. That's that, that, that Seiko needs to do a little better than that. And actually, that brings us to the final point, which is that the uh, price on this guy just isn't amazing. Um, it is 525 bucks. Now look. That that's absolutely okay, I, I guess. It's it, Compared to your high-end mechanicals, yeah, it's a great freaking bargain. However, at the same time, compared to things like Citizen or Casio, for instance, okay, 
Here, I'll give you, a, I'll show you a citizen, or I'm sorry, Casio's answer to this kind of thing. And given this is a very different piece, but this is a uh, Casio Mudmaster. You can see it's another analog digital sort of watch. Um, and it's got its own set of quirks. It's much bigger, it's much beefier, it's in many ways a lot sillier. I find this to be a much more attractive uh, watch personally. But at the same time, it's uh, a lot cheaper, like about half the price. And so compared to that, this is not feeling like a great bargain. Um, frankly, I would go so far as to say this pricing is a little predatory. Uh, predator joke, Arnie? No? Okay. Anyways, I really don't care for that price. I want to see them drop that down because they are really way above Casio and Citizen. If you look at what you're getting for 500 bucks over there, much, much better than this. So, to me, all of that is the best. The price isn't great. There's no sapphire crystal. The alignment with the second hand isn't always perfect. Um, the uh, metal keeper is a little scratchy at times. Um, it, it has very small hands, which bothers some people. Um, the watch itself didn't need to be any bigger, and there is zero jewelry factor here at all. On the ugly front, the only thing that I find ugly personally is actually the arrangement of the indices, and it's particularly um, uh, troublesome late at night, because if you look down at this guy, it feels like your watch is melting. There's a bit of a Salvador Dali-esque thing to it, right? Because your one, I'm sorry, your 11, your uh, one, and your 12 uh, little indices are actually out of position. They've been moved downwards from their normal position to accommodate this. The, op the option, uh, of course, is to not have those there. Um, and I, I do appreciate that they went ahead and gave us those indices. But at some level, the, the squish downitude of it really feels weird to me. I'm sure I'd get used to it over time. But as somebody who's very used to indices being in a certain place, um, for instance, on the Omega here, it's a little bit like, oh, yeah, yeah. And so a couple of times I'd look down and just be like, oh, that's weird. Um, is it a big problem? No. Is it actually functionally ugly? No. But to me, at least, I find it kind of unattractive. So subjective or not, that's the ugly, is that they've moved the indices around and really compressed them together at the top there to cram in this Anadigi display. Um, final conclusion. Look, um, at some level, this is a really good watch. I mean, I, I, I like it. I've worn it for a few days, and I, I it's solid. It's good to go. It's accurate. Being a quartz watch, it's durable. It's legible. It's diveable. It's soulless, so you don't have to worry about running, you know, changing batteries. It's really well loomed. It's got lots of good features, and it has a movie magic connection that some people will find quite magical. Mind you, it is not jewelry. I'm 100%. I tend to like watches that have a little bit more flair to them, and this is not that. Um, it's got tinier hands than I do. It, the, 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 the alignment isn't necessarily great. The crystal being mineral at this price point, that feels kind of lazy, Seiko. Come on. And the, the, the price point honestly isn't super strong anyways. And the look, particularly of these squished indices, is going to be a bit of an acquired taste that I don't think I've acquired yet. Ultimately, though, this is one of those pieces that sort of has two competing realities. At one level is a tool. This is a great little tool. It is uh, very functional, and it would serve you very well as a tool or a timepiece, by land, by sea, probably even by air. This is absolutely a, a solid little watch, and I can see somebody buying this watch if they love the look of it and wearing it happily for the rest of their damn life, because it is a really nice little piece. Functionally speaking, there was never a moment where I was like, wow, I wish I had a different watch on. Uh, no, this would, I mean, yeah, functionally, no, it's absolutely good to go. Um, but it is also pricey, and that's kind of its biggest issue. If the price on this guy were 200 bucks, 300 bucks, it'd be like, yeah, go do one right now. But unfortunately, I think they're really banking on the Arnie connection here, or at least they're banking on something, um, to make that price feel a little bit more acceptable. Because honestly, it doesn't feel all that acceptable as it stands. I'm just not a really big fan of that price point. It just doesn't work all that well for me. And so you can get a bunch of other pieces that are uh, analog digital that is Citizen Seiko, I'm sorry, Citizen Casio, uh, all of those kinds of things that have similar functionality for way, way lower prices. Heck, even the Citizen, B, uh, um, I'm sorry, uh, the Casio F108 has almost the same kind of thing. It's just not analog. You can do really, really good work there. Um, and so, I don't know. Final conclusion, um, it's good. It's expensive. Honestly, it's a nice watch. It's a, got a Hollywood pedigree, a solid function. But ultimately, I think the thing that's going to decide, you know, if your budget and your fashion sense uh, are in line with this guy, then who knows? This guy may get you to the shopper because it turns you into a shopper. That's a predator joke. Get to the chopper. No? Okay. That was really, really weak. I'm sorry. I, 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 I uh, pray 
that my next pun will be better because predators have prey. No? Okay. Anyways, there you go. I hope this was the review that you were hunting for uh, and that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. <laughs> Bye now.